What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you the latest news coming from this week at Bungie the TWAB which was released not long ago but before we get into the juicy details of this week's TWAB Every single month, people, I am giving away a fully customizable controller for either Xbox or PlayStation. To be with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below and enter the Gleam Link giveaway linked at the top of the video description. Fast, simple, and legit, people. Okay, so let's get into the TWAB. And the TWAB starts off with. Update 1.2.3 lands on Tuesday. With it, quick play will evolve to become a 6v6 engagement. Between now and then, our old friend, the Iron Lord, is the only one with the hookup. Rumble is also returning with the 1.2.3 update. So for you solo players, you also will be hooked up. What also will be coming with the 1.2.3 update this Tuesday will be bounties. This is what Bungie state. When you light out into the world in search of action and adventure, the fighting is all the sweeter when you have more ways to reap the rewards. In update 1.2.3, we're expanding on the experience with new bounties for Destiny 2. Senior design lead Tyson Green has some thoughts on what we want to accomplish with the addition to the player experience. Quoting Tyson right here, with the original launch of Destiny, bounties provided a set of daily objectives that players could use to advance faction reputation or earn XP to level up their gear. These were removed to streamline the activity experience in Destiny 2 and reduce the number of chores that players felt compelled to complete every day. In retrospect, we realised that that was an overcorrection and an optional daily objective to achieve specific goals are something we want to restore. The bounties returned to Destiny 2 in Update 1.2.3 are a return to most of the properties of bounties in the Taken King. They will be obtained from a variety of vendors. They will generally reward XP and faction reputation, though some will offer even better rewards and can be redeemed in the field to immediately claim the rewards. In Forsaken, you may also see some bounties drop in the wild. There are two new mechanics. Bounties will expire if left uncompleted, and acquiring them will cost a small amount of glimmer. We wanted to avoid the grab every bounty you see until your inventory is packed and sort them out to later experience without constraining players to a tiny inventory they found in previous iterations of the game. In Forsaken, more vendors will have more bounties on offer, and some will provide legendary or better rewards for completing them. So what does that tell you guys people? In Forsaken, more vendors will have more bounties on offer. Some will provide a legendary or better rewards for completing them. Well, what's better than legendary people? Exotic. So exotic bounties will be available for your vendors within the Forsaken. Now, if you guys remember year one of Destiny 1, you had a chance of when you cashed in a bounty that the Fawn bounty would drop. I think you used to get the Fawn, the Pocket Infinity, and I'm pretty sure there was another one. If you guys know what that is, let me know down below in that comment section. But yeah, if you used to cash in a bounty, there's a chance you'd get an exotic bounty drop and you go on to do a few challenges to get the, say, Fawn or Pocket Infinity. I'm guessing that that's what might actually happen within the Forsaken, which would be absolutely epic. But exotic bounties, people, that sounds pretty cool to me. Okay, so moving on into the actual TWAB, and they're going to talk about the Guardian Con fundraising stream and what they're doing and the work they're doing. And that's absolutely incredible, raising money for St. Jude's. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And I'm pretty sure they raised over two million dollars and it wasn't just about destiny either there's many many games being played including fortnite as well but fair play to absolute everybody who took part incredible work they're then going to talk about the actual news that Game Informer have been dropping over the past week or so with new supers flashpoint changes the tangled shore and so forth as well as uh, new exotics which we know is the cerberus plus one auto rifle which is just craziness but they are not done in showcasing new things coming to the game so keep an eye on game informer people if you ain't aware of this more changes with the 1.2.3 update are as follows misc quality of life changes pc clan chat adds a new in-game text chat channel that allows online destiny 2 clan members to communicate once all Mercury Forge weapons have been obtained, they become available for direct purchase from Brother Vance in the Lighthouse on the second vendor page. Remove momentum from Heroic Adventures. The Pursuit's inventory bucket has been moved to the top of the inventory categories. Commas have been added to large numbers as separators under IGCR and PGCR. 
exotic armor fixes. Fix an issue that was causing targets marked by sanguine alchemies to produce orbs when defeated. Fix an issue that caused Starfire Protocol to not work with Dawnblade Attunement of Sky Ability Path. Fixed an issue that prevented Warlock melee attack damage when using the Ophidian Aspect Exotic and the Hive Swords or Orb Carry Objects. Additionally, some Heroic Strike modifiers will be given slight adjustments in response to player feedback. Bungie's Test Engineer has a quick round of developer commentary on the goal of these changes. Quoting him right here. Hey all, since the release of update 1.1.3, we've been collecting player feedback concerning heroic strike modifiers. On Tuesday, three of the more punishing modifiers will receive some adjustments. Ultimately, we want your power, stats and armor modifications to matter. And we realise that our debuff modifiers were a little too powerful to allow players to see their impact. Here's what you can expect. Blackout. We wanted to ensure that enemy melees are threatening, but this shouldn't dismiss a player's power progression or the stats they choose to invest in with their armor. As such, this modifier is changing somewhat. It still increases enemy melee damage significantly, but it's no longer a guarantee of players being defeated by a single melee from many enemies. Be careful though, if you're not at the recommended power for the Heroic Strikes playlist, your enemies will be more powerful and pack a harder punch. Grounded. There are many times players are considered airborne when they're not actually jumping. To account for that, we're reducing the damage threshold so players aren't punished for things outside of their control. Additionally, we're looking to prevent players from falling to their demise from a height of 2 meters, just as they happen to land on a rock or some other small object. Glass. This modifier reduces the Guardian's shield and health while increasing recovery. We slightly reduce the impact of this modifier to better enable players to see the effects of their overall power progression over time. They also state that we need to stay tuned to Bungie.net next week for the full patch notes which I will have you guys covered here on my channel. They're then going to talk about uh, the prismatic matrix and changes coming to it. Quoting Bungie right here, over the past few months we've been testing a new feature called the prismatic matrix. When we first announced this new reward system, we stated our goals for this experiment, give players more control over how they earn eververse items, offer a more predictable path each week that guarantees access to specific items, drop fewer duplicate items. This week the user interface calls specific attention to the limited time of the feature. To explain our previous objectives and future plans, here are some thoughts from the design team. The original intent of the Prismatic Matrix was for it to be a special event, something to help players round out their collections. As the odds of earning the items that were eluding them improved as they continued to earn bright engrams, we had a limited number of weeks scheduled. Designed to keep reputation to a minimum, that schedule of curated offerings is coming to an end, so the feature will be going on temporary hiatus starting next week. Thanks to some good feedback about this new feature, we've learned how we can make it better, so we continue to support it in Forsaken. We look forward to your continued feedback and are excited to relaunch the Prismatic Matrix in the next season of Destiny 2, and there will be more on this topic before the launch of this DLC in September. They're then going to fill us in on the Moments of Triumph. It's caught in Bungie right here. On July 7th, we launched Moments of Triumph on Bungie.net and the Destiny Companion. Destiny 2 players can now track their triumphs online before they go live in game with the Solstice of Heroes live event. The following is vital information that players should be aware of for moments of triumph. Progress towards triumphs and event rewards may be lost if players delete any characters on their account. For the best experience, it is recommended that players do not delete any characters until all desired rewards have been redeemed and Sources of Heroes concludes on August 28, 2018. Players will not be able to redeem completed triumph for points and rewards until Solstice of Heroes goes live in Destiny 2 on July 31st, 2018, which is the end of this month, people. They also then go on to state starting lines for Worlds First. Next Tuesday, July 17th at 10 a.m. PDT, Destiny 2 Update 1.2.3 will become available to players. To allow players to download and install this update and prepare for the launch of the Prestige Rage Layers, Leviathan Eater of Worlds and the Leviathan and Spire of Stars will be temporarily disabled. These activities will become available for players to compete for Worlds First at the following times. 
Leviathan Eater of Worlds Prestige, 11 a.m. PDT on July 17th. Leviathan Spire of Stars Prestige, 10 a.m. PDT on July 18th, which is the day after people. But at least they're giving you time if you are interested in trying for Worlds first to get this downloaded. To be honest, I don't think the update will be that big anyway, but I believe you've got about an hour after the download is released before the first Prestige Red Lair is dropped on July 17th. And again the day after the other red layer which will be the spire of stars at 10 a.m pdt which is i believe 6 p.m uk time folks and guys that is basically it for this week's twab now if you do want to check it out and read through all i will link it within the video description but guys we have come to the end of the video if you enjoyed it leaving a like really does help me out if you're new around here and enjoy daily destiny videos be sure to subscribe and hopefully people i will see you on that next one Always in the wrong Knowing where we stand